I'd like to introduce, uh, let's introduce, I don't know if you uh, have ever met, um, others you met, maybe you maybe her him in, at both the conference from Sweden. And uh, please, uh, let's introduce each others. Anders, please. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I just uh, started uh, the recording, if it's okay, okay with everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold Thank on, you. hold on just for one second. Can I ask my class to just come gather around here for a moment so you can hear the introductions? This is a unusually small class, and they're going to just uh, meet, hear, the, hear your introductions and say hello, and then they may come in and out, and they'll be working on their own projects. So... Let's see if we can see. This is my class. Okay. So I want them to hear your introduction. So just grab a seat. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm going to turn one light off. All right. Okay. Okay. Should I start? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah my name is Anders from Sweden. Um, I. ICT advisor in pedagogy. I don't really know my title, but I'm doing stuff with the computers and uh, uh, programming and everything. And I, I'm a scratcher since uh, 2008, I think, maybe 2009. I've been to uh, scratch conferences uh, five, I think, and I met Susan and I met the other guys as well. Uh, in Sweden, we had snow yesterday, but uh, it started to rain a lot, and now it's melting. Everything is melting away. So, uh, and right now it's dark in Sweden, so it's kind of uh, boring weather. Okay, that's me. To the next one. Okay, Alan. Hi, uh, I'm, Alan. Yourself. <laughs> I'm Alan. I, uh, I'm located in uh, New Jersey here in the States. Um, at this point, I'm pretty much retired, but I, I develop a lot of uh, software to interface with Scratch and other things. So I have several programs out there that allow you to connect things uh, like Arduino and, and, and micro bits to Scratch and control it with Scratch. That's basically it. Okay, Veronica. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello. I am Veronica from Mexico. Viva Mexico! <laughs> but uh, now I'm in Montreal, Canada, because I hear my grandson and my son lives. And uh, um, I'm a kindergarten teacher since 1967 long long time ago then i work a lot uh, with uh, little children and with uh, young people like you i love to to work uh one thing i love the creativity uh, if you if you like love to make something and be creative and uh, everybody could be creative then i i love to make workshops about uh, with young people like you, and I love to dance, and I love to sing, and I love to make parties. Do you love parties, boys and girls? Yeah or not? And you like parties? Yeah! Yes, well, <laughs> and I love computers, and I love to use uh, computers with the kids. And Scratch is a good, good language to make. Uh, I okay, may, uh, maybe Simon could introduce yourself. It's raining here, so I'm just going somewhere. Simon, can you uh, say something? Simon. Hello. Simon in Tanzania. Simon, you're there? Yes, I am, but okay. it was raining uh, here. Let so me I introduce to... myself while Simon is not here. I'm Eloisa. I'm from Brazil, I live in Sao Paulo, I'm a teacher, and I'm very fond of your teacher, a great teacher, from my heart. <laughs> Hello, guys. 
You are lucky. <laughs> Now, I was speaking to Simon before, so he was there. Simon, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. It, it seems he can't hear us. OK, he'll be okay. before. Shall we have a quick introduction on our end? Yes. OK, Go on, so um, you all look very far away in the video, as you can see. So if you could just speak really loudly, just your first name. And your age, maybe? Start, Alexander. Just shout. Here, I'll, I'll get you on the screen. OK, there's Alexander. Alex, I'm a freshman. Loud, loud, loud. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a freshman. My name is Peter, and I'm 14. My name is Nick, and I'm 14 as well. Raise <laughs> your hand so people can see you. OK, good. I'm Lewis. I'm a Wave your hand so people know who you are. Okay. I'm Angelica. I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Shane. I'm a freshman. I'm Rachel, and I'm a freshman. I'm Sabina. I'm a sophomore. So people here are generally like 14 to 17 to 18, and we have um, my sort of teaching assistant. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello. Introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. So we've been. Um, we, this is called. This is called. Well, you're kind of asleep. <laughs> Isn't where you located? Okay. We are in uh, New York City. We're in New York City Public School. We are in Manhattan on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And um, pretty much everyone here, it's a fairly small school, 550 students in four grades. And this is a college prep high school. Most of these people, pretty much everyone in this school is preparing to go to university. So um, yeah, so we're going to tell you about what we're doing. This class is called Animation One. And it's an elective class in the arts department. But it's kind of a secret way of doing coding, too. So it's about imagination, animation, and coding. Simon, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Simon. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. This is can so you hear strange. Me? Simon and I were just talking before, and he's wearing a fabulous outfit today with an African textile. So I'm disappointed. Hello? Hello. Can you hear us? I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh oh, did the whole call freeze? Mm -hmm. What happened? <laughs> oh wait, no. Um Hello Louisa, can you hear us? <laughs> well, I, I can put us on mute too. Fine. If I say that now, Eloisa. Oh, we can't hear. Yeah. Why? Okay. Hello? Okay. There. Uh, Susan, uh, no. let's go on normally. And when Sam can uh, is back, he he can explain himself. Okay. Okay. Can let's, you? Let's go on with the your class and things you have to present. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, it's perfect. Okay. I'm going to switch to a screen share now, OK? OK. OK, and we're, Simon and I are going to share this presentation with everyone. Um, so let me switch to a screen share here. Uh, let's do. On the left, on the green flag. Yes, uh -huh, we have it. It's coming up. We're all ready for you. Okay. Let me just do this. Share. Okay, let's see now. Almost, almost have it here. Can you share? Okay, I've only done this a million times. Okay, can you see our screen now? Okay, uh, you present. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So now um, some of my students are going to stay around and some of them are going to go do their project. Susan, uh, yes. uh, excuse me. Uh, Sandy, 
has just joined us. Oh, great. Uh, I think you have already met her in a uh, Scratch conference in 2016. Okay, uh, great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you know each other? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Should I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. So you may all stay around here and watch this or do your work. Whichever you prefer. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. All right. And come back as you want. Or stay or come up. Okay. So um we Simon and I were both um spending some time last summer in Bordeaux at the Scratch conference with Andrea from Europe and we learned about more about Turtle Stitch and we had the idea to engage in this shared project. So why Turtle Stitch? It's a block-based programming language. It helps make abstract ideas concrete. We're able to touch our code and we get involved with making and creating. Here's uh, some of our contact information. Yeah. Which we will add in. Okay, we'll continue that. Okay. So um, we basically just wanted to share with you a lot of pictures. And I will not um, read every slide, but we will go back and we will continue to add more information. It has to do with coding and then actually stitching the code. This is a picture of an audio wave that was coded and interpreted on the digital embroidery machine. Um, let's see if this link works. I don't know how this video will work for all of you, but let's try it. Can you see the video? Yes. yes. People, I'm going to turn off your microphones because if time some some sounds we lost Susan's, okay? And can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Okay, great. So um, that's just an example. And an inspiration is from this new, from Mitch Resnick's, from MIT, his new book, Lifelong Kindergarten, which I think you're all probably familiar with. And he talks about projects, peers, passion, and play. Turtle Stitch is just a great way to make this happen. Um, so what's happening is the lower right-hand corner is my class, uh, a different class than this class, but another class during the day. And the upper corner and the other picture, uh, these are some students in Tanzania, in Simon's group. And we have some yeah. people in Kenya with Grace and Max. And they're all learning to code. And they're learning to code for the purpose of creating patterns and expressing themselves. And the inspiration for these patterns come from our own cultural backgrounds of the textiles that we live with every day. And when we get Simon back in, you'll see what he's wearing today is very uh, typical of an African textile. Very often Can people look right at now? art or textiles and they say, wouldn't that make a wonderful coding problem? So what we've done is we propose that it's uh, people can learn to code through making things. Can you hear me when I so speak? So here are the sources that we use for this, and here are the links so you can explore. This all comes from Scratch originally, but Snap, developed by Jan Smonig, was comes from Scratch. And Turtle Stitch, uh, we have to add the rest of the links in here. We'll add in some more links here. Michael is the developer for Turtle Stitch. Andrea Mayer is the creator of Turtle Stitch. And BJC on the right is a curriculum that comes out of the University of California, Berkeley, that uses SNAP to teach computer programming. So we're trying to put all this together. I'll just sit on this slide a minute so that you can all read it. I won't read the slide, but really what happens is that learning computational concepts and practices and working together as teams and making projects 
objects and having active collaboration leads us to the bottom right hand corner which is our project website exploring coding stitching culture together and what we hope to do is entice some of you to join us uh, you can see we don't have anyone from Mexico and we don't have anyone from Brazil and we would very very much like to include you in this project our goal is to code, to stitch, and to share embroidered designs and patterns from around the world. We think that by learning to code and expressing ourselves digitally and being inspired by our own textiles from each culture, uh, we can really have an opportunity to talk with each other and share and get to know each other. So many people don't have digital embroidery machines. And we want to share the idea that there's a very old-fashioned idea called stitching on paper, paper embroidery. And here are just a few links. And here are some pictures of people who were sitting around a table talking very similar to the way people would make quilts or would knit or share any kind of handcraft, just sitting around a table, stitching. But the difference here is that they're stitching their code some on paper, some on the machine. And um, that's the end of our official presentation. I'm going to switch back here to our video. And let's see if we can get Simon in, because what we really wanted to, Simon, are you there now? Hello? Let me, uh, Hello? What we really wanted to do is um, share our project in order to facilitate a conversation between us all. Hello. Uh, Eloisa, you can hear? Can you hear me? Yes. OK, can we call Simon back, maybe? Or how can we get Simon in here? He's on. He's on. His microphone is on. Can you hear him? Oh. I don't know what happens to, to Simon. No, I can't hear him either. Oh, Simon, yay. Yeah. Um, oh, OK. <sighs> All right. That was so difficult. We couldn't. I don't know. This. Yeah, the mic shows that I'm talking, and my voice is being recognized, but I, I, I think you are not hearing me very well. No, now, now you're good. Now you're good. Um, I'm going yeah. to stop screen sharing here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Simon, did you see the slides from our presentation? Yes. And it's so, really good. Um, can you add everything now that you wanted to add and show what you're wearing, please? Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, let's make your, this design is in your t-shirt embroidery. Beautiful. Yes. I meant to wear my turtle suit <laughs> today, and I am devastated that I forgot it at home. <laughs> Next time, I think you, because it's here, you have some cool designs also. So, a few months ago, I think at uh, like uh, Susan said at uh, the conference, crash conference in Bordeaux, uh, I met uh, with Susan, and 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 we 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 just got in touch, and when we came back to Tanzania. Uh, we decided to do a pilot uh, course for Tato Stitch and see how uh, we could use the program in our classroom to teach girls. Um, and so last month we put together a, t uh, a class of designers, uh, students, and it was a mixed class really. Um, and we taught them how to uh, design patterns like this. Uh, because as you can see, it's uh, geometrical shapes. And that's what most fabric here uh, is made out of with different colors. Um, and so we didn't have the machines and that's why I was in particular interested uh, with the last slide about stitching on paper. Uh, because in the classroom, uh, we got a few threads and, and, and needles um, and did code on the computer, printed it out on paper and then the classroom participants could then uh, stitch them uh, using the needles and threads on paper. 
And so um, we did a, a challenge, uh, design for Kanga challenge, uh, where they were supposed to come up with designs like this uh, using tattoo stitch um, that could later on probably be printed on cloth. Um, and we have some amazing results out of that. Uh, we have some, some of them are drawn uh, by hand and by computer, but others, they have gone further to put them on the on, on tattoo stitch platform and draw some geometrical shapes like flowers uh, that were put in the, in the system here. Yeah. May I ask you something? Yeah. Simon. Uh, yes. Because you don't work in a school. You ha it's an after school project, isn't it? So, yes. kind of. You, sometimes you go to the school, some kind of stuff like this. So, uh, how did you uh, announce it? Um, and because you have boys and girls and when you say stitching it's a project about coding okay but it's teaching how do they receive this kind of stuff yeah. and how did you make this work actually with great support from susan we managed to put up a curriculum uh for one month uh a total of eight classes and so after we had sort of a plan about what we were going to teach uh, in the classrooms we just asked uh friends to recommend other friends um and also uh girls who had participated in our program before to recommend other girls to come and attend the program and during the program we did some live sessions uh where susan and her classroom just like this uh got onto a video call and shared what they are learning but also even the girls in our classroom and students shared what we are learning in our classroom. So that was really, really helpful, yeah. Okay, also, it's amazing. Um, I just wanna add in that uh, we have a lot more we wanna do, and so we wanna invite you all in, it's not too late. <laughs> and um, in January, we hope to extend the project. There's a um, book artist, here I'll type her name in the chat, we're hoping to engage she works in Baltimore right now, uh, Suzanne Coley, and we're working on the final pieces of our proposal to bring her to New York to be an artist in residence for a short amount of time with this project. And we have the coding and we have the stitching and we have the students. Um, we'd like to bring her in to add a little more of the really purely creative artistic side to the whole project. And she has now started hand embroidering in her artist books and uh, she has shown her work around the world, and our students will be working with her to learn how to code for embroidery and incorporating some digital embroidery into the books with the multimedia and with her hand embroidery. And the other thing is we were able to mail some thread and paper and needles to people, so if there's anybody you know who would like to join our project, we can send you thread and paper and needles. And also, I have the sewing machine here, and so we are hoping that people will start to send designs to us and we will stitch them. Um, we can consult by video about color and how they would like it stitched. We have about 100 cloth bags that we would like to embroider and mail back to people with their designs. Also this Sunday at noon in New York, and I'll put this information up, we're having our first turtle stitch meetup. Um, Michael is in from Europe. So James Deck, who is a teacher in New York City at a private school, has a connection to Columbia University Teachers College. They have a makerspace and they have an embroidery machine. So we're going to meet there in person on Sunday and hopefully set up another Google Hangout like this for anybody who would like to join us. And I'll, put, I'll announce all of that too. So we hope to entice you to help us find more partners around the world. The more partners around the world, the more cultural backgrounds we have to share. And the more people learn to code. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, so I think we can open for questions, comments, suggestions. Who wants to ask something? 
Also, my students have gone back to work in the background because yesterday the bell rang and everybody was very, very, very busy. And one day yesterday, through Turtle Stitch, we covered algorithms, abstractions, and variables. So everybody is furiously, as wonderful as to meet you all, they would rather be back coding, but we can call them back if you have any questions or would like to speak to any of them. <laughs> That's okay, thank you, Susan. I think uh, Veronica wants to, to talk something. Yes, Susan, uh, well, I love, I love your work and I love Simon's shirt. And uh, uh, we have a, a group in Sinacantan, Chiapas. Chiapas is a little uh, a state in the south of Mexico. And this group, of uh, there are two girls. One of, uh, she is, um, they, they uh, make a lot of handcrafts. And they, I think they could be uh, working with you because uh, they, they know about computers. And they love to make um, new designs of their of their clothes. Uh, I think there's going to be wonderful if we put all together in in this in this um, in this team. You're going to love her. Uh, to love them. Oh, you already have a contact in Mexico, a big one, and Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Veronica, the, uh, uh, Veronica has been doing a wonderful work. He, she has a big group, so now you have your content. Okay, Sandy, what do you think? The, uh, there you go. This is the group uh, cheese. Uh, this is the kind of of, of work she, she made. Veronica, I'm sorry, but your connection is not very good. We can't see or hear you very well. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. If you want to share your screen, maybe it's better, but we can't see you. It's okay. Okay. Can, can you share your screen if you... It would be great. Thank you. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to send the Facebook of that group. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Hello, Lisa. Okay, go on, please. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, I'm really very excited by what I'm seeing. I, I love, I love the idea. I'm trying to wrap my head around how I can do that. You know, I like the idea of the paper stitching and that's what I think. And I'm thinking with my after school club, this would be something, this would be a really good project. So I need to explore. I think I need to explore it a little bit more, the projects, but I need simple projects for like fifth graders and fourth graders and third graders. Um, is this something that's accessible to this, that age group, you think? Maybe I could share from my experience here. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, so uh, it was really easy for us because we, we train out of school programs and we train to really young girls. Um, it was really easy for me to uh, implement such a training in a really short time because the, the whole curriculum is, they have this uh, tattoo stitch cards that are step by step, level by level, and it's pretty easy for you to understand what to teach first, what to teach second. Um, and like uh, Susan said, she, she she's so willing to email thread and, and needles over for you to get started. Um, and so I think it's something, re if you're looking for something easy to do uh, for, for third graders, this is the program to do because they will just, it's easy to, to, to do in a short time, yeah. Also, also we have um, very active partners. So we can partner one-on-one -on -one your students with our students to share projects and to share questions. Could you remind me where you're located? I'm in uh, Delaware, um, Del Milton, Delaware. Yes, Correct. Southern Delaware. So 
Close to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was yeah. just, well, that's interesting. Suzanne's based in Baltimore. Yeah. Um, we would love to partner one-on-one -on -one with students. We've done that between high school and elementary before. Um, all kinds of great connections there, and it is very easy. And if you just look at the Turtle Stitch website, and we also, uh, we will add that link to our presentation now, but we did create this series of basic tutorial cards of how to get started with Turtle Stitch, and also we have the whole BJC curriculum that we link to, which is actually a little more advanced, but it's we can definitely help you work through it. They'll have a lot of fun. I'm really excited by this because I do this after school club and I have been looking for something new to do with them. And especially my girls, I'm thinking they'll, this will appeal to them, I'm hoping. Anyway, you know. About a year and a half ago, some of our boys took the school. We have our school animal is a husky, and they made a paw print, and they interpreted the paw print as a series of circles, and they coded the circles in turtle stitch using snap, and then they printed them on small pieces of hard paper, and we embroidered uh, bookmarks for people with the school colors. Oh. Oh, I love that project. Awesome. I'm excited. That's great. That's what I wanted to, to ask you, uh, because it's a co they learn to code, they learn to use, to make the embroidery. You, you thought about the, this artist that's coming. Um, maybe, do you, if you have some people who works with fashion, to use this embroidery, do you have something after this in mind or just, you know, if they have another final goal, maybe using fashion or I don't know, or something like that, or if students can use this to make their own clothes or put personalize something, uh, does it go on or not? How is it? Well, um, Simon and I are putting pilot part two into effect in January, hopefully, and um, we're planning it in uh, about three weeks. We're having a planning meeting for part two of the pilot. But right now in Europe, um, the Turtle Stitch is being used to train young textile designers. So we have specific places where it is being used to train textile designers. You know, just because you learn to read and write doesn't mean you're going to write a novel or be a poet, but we all learn to read and write. And we feel that whether you're going into medicine or fashion design or the arts, there's a place to learn programming and a, a use for it. So this will go everywhere. Right now in my room, we have the digital embroidery machine and we have a traditional sewing machine. We haven't yet started doing it, but I don't see any reason why people couldn't start making pockets to sew onto their pants. Or somebody suggested recently um, a musician, I'd like to take one of the pieces of music that I'm composing in my music class, stitch it, and can I bring a shirt in and put it on my shirt? And we said, yes, absolutely. Oh, because I think this is the step two in this this process because they get motivated. Not oh no, I I already know how to do it and that's it. No, how to explore this? I think it's uh, full of uh, possibilities to to go to develop this. This it's wonderful. Well, the essence I think of what I believe and what Simon believes is exactly what Mitch Resnick has taught us all, which is you don't learn to code, you code to learn. You code to express yourself in a digital world. So we're not interested in, you know, online chapter one, chapter two, fill in the code, make it work. We're really interested in how we can take this and allow people to express themselves and to hold their code and to wear their code and to share it. I mean, that's why you learn to read and write, right? In a very creative yeah. process. <laughs> yeah. Exploring, this is wonderful. Yeah. And we're open to more partners in New Jersey, too. And Sweden. <laughs> what, what do you what do all think we can do to help people get involved in this, to make it easier for them to try it, to want to get involved with this idea of sharing? And I think even if um, we don't share an actual, you know, we, we can vary from saying we want to work from the inspiration of textiles because this reflects our culture and it's a good basis for sharing different cultures. But within that, there are, of course, all sorts of things that we can share. But what can you think of that we can do to involve more people from different places to create this dialogue through coding? 
Uh, Veronica, do you want to answer? Do you want to, to, to talk, to say something about this? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think, uh, Susan, um, in my country, uh, there are a lot of natives uh, who made their own designs. And uh, once a French woman came and made something with that, those designs, and she uh, has, uh, um, she said she is the owner of that designs because she puts something leather or something like that. And I think the, the best thing is how we can uh, have our own uh, traditions uh, safe, safe for these people who want to, to use our, our creativity on their own things. Uh, and, and I think it, what are we doing with the code and, and, and everything, it's not only to, to, to know how to do it, if only it's, it's so uh, to do how, how to preserve your traditions and how to preserve the things you know and how to preserve your own work. I think it's both of the things together. When uh, Simon and I started talking about different uh, cultural textiles, what came to my mind in terms of American textiles are quilts. And uh, quilts are not something that are well understood in Africa because it's really not cold enough to have a quilt, which is really interesting to me. And yet I still think it could be fun if we get enough people from around the world to do this, to make squares from each of us, physical squares, and stitch them together into one quilt. Yeah. What other kinds of I, um, cultural traditions do you all see connecting to this? I think also, Susan, one of the nice things that uh, I also learned through this was, remember when you talked about the quilt and we, on this side of the world, we had never heard of the quilt. And then we spoke about the kangas and students from your class had never seen uh, this kind of textile before and so this program was a nice way to teach coding but also sharing cross-cultural differences and norms uh, from different places of the world so I think that's one of the beauty of especially phase two that we're going to do uh, try to bring in different people from different countries to participate in the program with the different cultures and how coding can apply in any of the different cultures to uh, to bring the textiles to could you explain every? Yeah. Could you explain that to everyone on the call, Simon? I'm not sure they understand. And it was a lot of fun having Simon translate the Swahili, and for us to see messages in textiles. So, so a kanga is a fabric just like this one, um, but they are all this. They are all similar in a way that they they have different patterns. Um, the shape is rectangular, and all of them have a particular message written on it. Um, I don't know, uh, I'm on my mobile phone, but I can share pictures later of what a kanga looks like. Maybe Susan, you can pull up one of the kangas. Um, but so, uh, that sort of speaks about something in the community. So uh, we had a competition here and some of the kangas had, uh, for example, if it was a drug message, it would be something along the lines, uh, what is not good for your body? And so it's written on a kanga such that if you're wearing it, somebody else can read the message and and understand what uh, it's saying. Okay. Um, Anders, Alan, would you like to say something? What did I tell you? That's the, the the project is really pretty amazing. Uh, it's very very impressive to see. I'm familiar with uh, with Snap, and I didn't realize. I know that they have something called Beetle Blocks, which I think Turtle Stitch comes out of. Um, but but it's really very very impressive. Um, I think the work that you guys are doing is is uh, 
is really phenomenal. I, I wish I could find some the pictures right now, but of course, because I'm trying to find them fast, but we'll put them in the presentation. And um, Turtle Stitch and Beetle Blocks are cousins. They're, some of the same developers are overlapping. But the question is, can you help us find more partners, all of you? Can you reach out? Because you can see we had some interest from different countries in Europe. We haven't really brought them in yet. Simon and I are hoping that as this comes together a little more, they'll see it. It's interesting in Kenya, we have uh, computer scientists students interested in the program. So they're not really learning to code, but they're uh, more advanced coders. But we're hoping they'll help us understand some of the more advanced aspects of the code. Because um, Richard Millwood, who's been very active, he's in the University of Trinity in Ireland. And he's been doing some amazing work in coding for Turtle Stitch. So please look back at the presentation later today, and we'll have more. We'll put all of these additional links that we've talked about back in, and it will stay live. I'm going to mute my microphone because the bell's going to ring soon, and my students are going to leave, and then my room will be empty. So then we can have more conversation if people are around. But I'm just going to mute now so that you don't all hear 500 people switching rooms. Okay, Anders, uh, would you like to, we, we are about to, to finish, um, let's make the final considerations here. Uh, Anders, would you like to say something? Yes, maybe, I, I, I don't really know what I'm going to say, but I, I went to uh, the Scratch conference in Amsterdam and there was a, a masterclass uh, workshop with uh, Andrea uh, who made the turtle stitch and I went to, to that uh, uh, masterclass and I, I've, I'm not a uh, fabrics man, uh, not embroidery man, but I found it so very, very interesting. So your, your work is amazing. And the culture, I, I, I'm speechless, I think. I, I could try to get someone in Sweden, but I don't really know. I have no name uh, with me today, but maybe I could uh, put it on Facebook if someone is interesting. I, I think there are someone who tried the turtle stitch. I've seen that in, in Sweden, but... It would be great, very great. And I, I love the work. That would be helpful. Yeah, I, I love the work that you are doing. Uh, you know, Simon, then you can transmit to, to Susan. Uh, just yes, before sir. you come in to join us, uh, Veronica was saying that her group, Edu Creatives from Mexico, uh, was invited to make a presentation uh, in Colombia. Uh, and they, oh. yes, they have contacts in all Latin America. And it was discussing just this because uh, all of them speak Spanish, do you know? We Brazilians speak in Portuguese, but all of them speak Spanish. So they are easy to, to, to communicate and to, to travel and for instance, in Europe, if you d go this distance, you change the language, everything. But in here, uh, in, in uh, South America, if you go to a, another country, it's the same language. Of course, the culture is different, but the language, it's the same. So she knows a lot of people. So we, we can, and for sure, Veronica is very active and very interested and with a lot of energy, good energy. Uh, now yeah. you have a good person to do that. Yes. yes. Do, do, you have, to it. do you have uh, some kind of a project uh, place, a website or a blog or something? So actually currently we are doing the, the website uh, and it's almost done. Uh, we'll share it with the, in the, we'll update the presentation and put the link there. Um, and it's going to have a lot of information for phase two uh, and for how people rate. Um, so currently, I think we share the link anyways as we're still developing it because still 
the home page is done and there's a link where you can click to sort of talk to Susan and then uh, be part of the program. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, um, I think we are about finished. Should, I'm should we wait, wait for Susan? Is, is she yeah. coming back? Yeah, she was coming back in three or five minutes or... Okay, uh, okay. Like and I think it was yeah. wonderful. Oh, she's back. Yep. So uh, then uh, this, this next period, I don't have a class, so I'm just here and it's quiet. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, let me turn the other light on, actually. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How our classes I, wanted them, I wanted them to be able to see you a little bit and when it's so um, light they can't see the screen we projected you all large on the screen oh thank you uh, Susan what I uh, was saying that um, Veronica has this group Educrativos and she was just telling us that they were in Panama Colombia? I heard about Panama. Sorry, sorry, Panama. Yes, 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 yes. And you know, and, no, she has contacts in a lot of. They great. have contacts in a lot of. And everybody speaks Spanish there. This is great. So it's easier for them to to talk and to to translate or something you have. They have a, an amazing group. So I think that you can go for it. Just contact Veronica. Thank and you, Veronica. Veronica. Okay, Veronica. Yeah, um, uh, in Mexico, uh, we are like uh, all cousins of all the countries around. And um, in Mexico, we made a seminar, and we um, and uh, the Minister of Education uh, brought uh, from every country one or two leaders, and we made um, a course for them. And then we are uh, have a team from different places from uh, Latin America. That's uh, all of them are teachers from uh, computer teachers from everywhere. And we I can share this presentation if uh, others are going to put it and and the and the, the, the link. I could send everybody this presentation. And I know most of them from Peru, from Colombia, from Chile, from Argentina, uh, from different places. They can uh, be um, very interesting in this work. I think so. Because we are all cousins from this part of the world. And I must say the fun thing for me being in New York City is that I have students from all over the world and they speak all different languages. So we recently, through Andrea in Europe, uh, who is a founder of Turtle Stitch, we found that there's a boys' school in Germany who has purchased a sewing machine and they're stitching. And I have a student in my other class who speaks German, whose family is actually in Switzerland right now. And this coming Monday, um, I have two boys in that class who have been doing a lot of embroidery, they're going to be meeting with the boys at the German school this coming Monday. So we have, uh, so language really shouldn't be a barrier. Time sometimes is a little bit challenging. Um, between New York and China is difficult sometimes, but you know, especially Peru has a very interesting um, culture of applique in their yes. textiles. Yes. Before I ever had a legitimate job as a teacher, I actually, at one point in my life, I did embroidery for money. I think I must have made about 25 cents an hour. So um, that's really my, my life has come such a complete circle thanks to programming and thanks to Mitch Resnick and Scratch. So I'm back with my love of embroidery. <laughs> well, well. But you know, it's so interesting and I'm sure it's true in all the countries. When I was in school, whether it was right or wrong that girls had home economics and boys had shop, still children learned to make things. It was considered part of school. And somehow it got lost, and we need to bring it back. Yes, 
uh, that's why uh, we are a team with uh, friends and the makers and the makers and uh, they have uh, this kind of machines to 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 make their own clothes yeah yeah this that we are returning to the back yeah is there a country or a culture that you all wonder about that we could um, together look for somebody from that culture to join us? Um, for me, I know I've, I've admired and enjoyed African textiles for many years and I've been exposed to it because of my life in New York. So it's been really a great gift that you from Amsterdam connected us in Bordeaux last summer. That was really the most amazing gift that I was able to meet in person and connect with the people from Africa. But how about all of you? What culture or what country, what would you, who would you be interested in meeting? Right now, I'm on a search to find people in Cuba, and it's not turning out to be that easy. But I'm looking for people who are teaching computer science in Cuba, hoping to connect with them. But what interests you? I have a lot of people, uh, friends in Cuba, if you want. I can try. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of friends there. I, I can try. We will be in touch. OK. But what country, what country do you wonder about? Who would you like to meet? Whatever. <laughs> we love all You know, that's... The Maasai from North Tanzania. So I'll be, next weekend, I'm actually going uh, to that region to talk about, to train a group of students about scratch. And they have an interesting pattern. Um, they, they call them shukas, and they are really good. They're, most of them, they use red, blue, and black colors to make these really amazing uh, clothes. So I'm, I'm excited to bring that also to the program. That would be really nice, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Maybe if you could share with us these pictures uh, in the group. I'm gonna, yeah. It's uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Elisa, how could we involve Brazil? Oh, we I can mean, talk. We can talk about it. But Brazil is a country where there really is exciting technology. When I um, studied in New York, my most interesting, innovative uh, colleagues were from Brazil in so many different ways, from up north, from the south, from all over Brazil. And yet we don't have anybody Brazilian in this project yet. Okay, yeah. let's think about it. So, uh, we'll be in touch. I would like to thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, thank you for sharing your workspace. Thanks for sharing your experience. So, Simon will have things to share with Sandy for the small ones. Yeah. And Veronica and Susan have a lot of things to share. Uh, many countries. You have many countries in South America to begin, Susan, while I'm looking for some Brazilian here. Okay? <laughs> so thank you very much. And hope to see you next week. Uh, it's supposed to Beatrice from Italy, now living in Sweden to present her work next week. Unfortunately, she didn't come up today. But we'll be in touch when we see. I'm very happy to be with this group that's going each time more related to each other and growing and sharing. That's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much.